Good morning everyone! Today I have decided to make a TV stand since it was time for me to take down the TV from the wall. And to top it all off, I had 3 pieces of large spotted maple just lying around and I didn't know what to do with it. So what I did is firstly remove all of the caked on stuff that started gathering on the wood and while doing so making sure to give it as many scratches as possible. I figured the more scratches it would have the better bonding epoxy would have with the wood since scratches would increase the surface area one would need for epoxy to bind to. Following that I planed each piece to be a little thinner than one inch. This was mainly done to save on epoxy since I would not need to use as much of it. Kids were very happy to help out with this process here since they never saw me pass such a long piece of wood through the planer before. This however made me realize just how dull my planer was getting. I will be replacing blades after winter for sure. Then I asked the kids what color should the epoxy be. They said red and wouldn't give me more colors. Although pink was suggested too but I didn't have pink pigment. I really didn't want the whole thing to be red and was hoping to get 3 colors out of the kids, one for each kid. So due to lack of choice given, I decided to add blue into the mix. Now was time to put everything into the mold I made. I will release a separate video of making the mold since that is a long tale of suffering and failures. This was going to be a custom mold that's 47 inches wide and 16 inches deep. This is actually where I didn't think ahead too much. I didn't think ahead because my planer can't plane anything larger than 12 and a half inches and this was 4 inches longer than I could handle. So I googled around to find someone who had a large drum sander and could sand the whole thing down for me. I found someone who offered to do it for $200. Unfortunately he was the only one who was driving distance from me so I had no choice but to accept it. Not to mention he sanded things incorrectly and actually ruined the red board and made it only half an inch thick. He sanded a good half an inch off of it and the epoxy bottom was still showing. You can see it in the videos I'm sanding the rest. Needless to say I will be searching elsewhere next time I need someone to drum sand for me and drive a lot longer if I have to. At least he did a decent job on a blue piece so the project was still salvageable. But my pockets did cry out in agony for losing $200 for something I wasn't happy with. How does Blacktail Studio do it for $75? I will never know. Anyways, as you see I cut the edges off to make sure both boards were the same size and then I sanded both boards myself starting from 80 grit and moving all the way up to 2000 grit and then I oiled them. Although it was highly unnecessary since I was going to still be doing things with the wood. And now it was time for making legs. My board was 15 inches wide by this point. I wasn't going to be making 15 inch wide legs. So I decided to make 4 legs instead of 2 giant side legs. But I didn't want to have those legs to be at the edges like a normal stand should have. So I came up with even crazier idea which you will see in the video as it goes on. For this I decided to add green color into the mix since I wanted this table to be tricolored. Anyway I decided that the side legs will be blue on top and pouring to be red on bottom and for the back legs I would have them be green and instead of a line going down it would go sideways. It was just a silly crazy idea I had because I really really had zero interest of ever going back to the shop for drum sanding. From structural perspective it kinda made sense to me. I even built a prototype out of Lego and surprisingly it held on pretty well. Once epoxy has dried for 3 days I proceeded to plane it to be 1 inch thick for each piece. I'm getting pretty tired of using epoxy. It is extremely hard to work with and I suspect is the main reason why my planer has become so dull. Not to mention I constantly have to clear the duct up when planing since epoxy always blocks it. Overall I'm most definitely going to be moving away from epoxy. Just isn't fun to work with even though I do tend to slightly enjoy the fancy schmancy colors. Once I finished planing I proceeded to make sure that each leg ends up being exactly same height as every other leg and that every leg is perfectly square. And on top of it I split the green piece in two to be thinner pieces since these two will be going to the back. And again just like I did with the other pieces I ended up oiling each piece up. I have no idea why I did it at all. There is no explanation since I did end up sanding everything off anyway and from what I learned oil doesn't really penetrate that deep so I would need to oil it again if I sand it. Now all pieces were almost ready. I didn't want to use any screws for this project and wanted to do joinery only. However at the time I was a little pressed for time so instead of getting a pretty reel of me doing pretty joinery using chisels and all you will see me crudely cutting out squares using a jigsaw and trying my best not to screw it up. 
and screw it up I did many many times I only showed you good bits here but I did cut a lot of things where they shouldn't have been cut some pieces actually cracked and I had to glue them back because I didn't really envision this project as well as I should have I rushed mainly because this was starting to become a really large project and eating up a lot of my time and actually money too so to keep my promise of making one piece per week I did rush a little here I'm not proud of it but it had to be done once all the joinery was ready, I proceeded to assemble the whole table together. I understand that with proper joinery, one shouldn't even need to use glue, but in my case, I had to. So I glued everything up and proceeded to assemble the stand up with a lot of glue and clumps. I even added weights on top of it just so everything was pressed down and would glue up properly. I did not record it, but I ended up putting 360 pounds, which is 163 kilograms for my European friends out there. And surprisingly, enough the stand didn't break and I kept the weights just to make sure things got glued on really really well after glue dried up to my horror I realized that some of my joints were really bad well it is not like I cut things properly anyway so it made sense that some gaps would be present I just didn't expect that many gaps so I did what I always do with gaps I took fine sawdust I got from sanding this stand mixed it all up with glue and proceeded to seal every crack I could find once everything was properly sealed up, I started sanding again. I started again at 80 grit and moved all the way up to 2000 grit. By the time I was done, I was covered in epoxy and sawdust from head to toe and looked like a giant white ghost. This took me 6 hours of non-stop sanding, probably biggest sanding session I had so far. Now that the whole table was sanded again and super shiny, I decided to try applying a thin layer of epoxy to the top of it. Mainly because I wanted to see difference between 2000 grit sanding and epoxy. So that's what you see me doing here. This was a horrible mistake by the way, which resulted in me sanding bottom of the legs again. So if epoxy would start dripping, I would quickly grab a plastic scraper and try to remove it. Well, fortunately, I avoided getting epoxy to the sides of the stand. Unfortunately, all that epoxy pulled on the bottom and ended up being stuck to the bottom of the legs. So I had to sand the bottom of the legs to scrape all that epoxy off. But once that was done, the stand was finally ready. I oiled this baby up and it was super shiny and beautiful. This was by far the toughest project I did. It cost me $600 in materials and took me 37 hours stretched over 6 weeks to make. I had a total of 34 hours of footage plus some footage which was lost because of GoPro being just so bad. That's how I estimate this taking me 37 hours. I was finally happy to be done with this project. I love the end result, but getting there was extremely painful and hard. I did learn a lot, and now I have a fancy stand on which my TV stand. It is really great piece I'm proud of. But it also made me realize that in my one car garage, making such large things is very very hard and extremely time consuming. If you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it and the table itself, please consider leaving a like and maybe subscribing. I try to release videos weekly. If you have any comments or suggestions, those are very very welcome too. I'm still learning after all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye bye!